And this is Cabin Conversations, a regular podcast here at Woodlands Church. I'm Dave, here with co-host Whitney. He started with and. Did you catch and that? It's this usually, is. well, this is, oh. is it usually well? I, I was, now I was going, <laughs> I was focused on not making a deal out of the introduction okay. this week. Well done. So. I did. <laughs> Well, yeah. What Here you don't do, I'll pick um, it up. That's great. You know, we got a thing going. So here with our guest, uh, Gabby Allard. Gabby, it's good to have you on. Hi. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This Fun is, to be here. Yeah. It's been three or four times we've had you on now, I think over the last... How long have you been on that staff That was going to be my softball oh, question. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> um, a little over a year in, like, in my role now. I, yeah. was, okay. I was an intern for two years previous to this. Right. But, and yeah. then you went to England. Mm-hmm. And then you yes. came back, yes. So, which we're really thankful for. So See, it's a little over a year. Been yes. a part of the staff for like four years, except for the pause, the one-year pause. In England. Kind of. Yeah. England, yeah. basically. So. That's well, why good. it feels like you've been here for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Yes. In a lot of mm-hmm. ways, it feels like I never left. So. Yes. But which then also fun. there's been an England chapter in there, which is pretty big and pretty far away. Mm-hmm. And like a whole year. Yeah. And yeah. can we say this in public? Like you bought a house too? <gasps> yeah. That's very exciting. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. That's, you guys are renovating it and doing mm-hmm. all these things. Mm-hmm. So Yes. We have no kitchen currently, but <laughs> we're, we're living somewhere else right now. So okay. um, we, we have access to it. When's kitchen, the move in time into the... At the end of November. Okay. So, so some good, good yes. work coming up. Mm-hmm. And, Yes. Are you learning a lot in terms of house construction? Are you doing the work? So uh, my dad is very skilled and competent in all of these kinds of things. And I did not realize how skilled he is until doing this project. I mean, I, much to my regret now growing up, my dad would be like, oh, help me with this thing. And I was 15 and was like, no, thanks. I don't want (laughs) to. I I think not. (laughs) Yeah. That's like the last thing that I'd want to do on my Saturday dad. Uh, But now I'm like. Sure. Why didn't I try to learn all of these things <laughs> uh-huh. when I was a kid and my dad was trying to teach me? Um, but yeah, it's been, I yeah, it's been such a blessing to me. My my dad is wonderful and like everything that I've been like, is it possible if we can maybe do this thing? And he's like, yeah, I can do that. That's Sweet. no problem. Yeah. I'm like, oh wow. So and is Elijah been, helping too? Yes. He's learning yeah. And helping so and so we're stuff. working alongside my mom and dad. To, <clears throat> yeah. That's super fun. Yeah, That's wonderful. The kitchen. So. That was a realization later on in our marriage once when Brian and I bought a house and I realized how handy my dad was and how many mm-hmm. things that we like were done in the house that I grew up in by my dad that we didn't have to pay for because he just had the ability to do it yeah and then when I married Brian he didn't have the same skills and I was like wait you'd, this isn't just an everybody thing this is yeah. not, not everybody yeah. has these skills and so it's been really sweet to watch my dad and, and Brian work together they learn like he learns from my dad my dad's kind enough to work alongside Brian but then I want to I want in on that too I want to learn yeah, some of these things yeah. too yes <laughs> so yes it's fun you have like by God's grace you have another opportunity to mm-hmm. learn from them your 15 year old no it can now be a 30 year old yes yes yeah, yeah. and I, I mean I don't know if I can just jump right into yeah. stuff but I've been thinking like this has actually been a really powerful picture to me of what it's like um to to follow God like mm-hmm. um partnering with God and like doing what he's asked us to do. Like, like we can't do it without his help. Like we can't do it without him um, mm-hmm. at the wheel, so to speak, and mm-hmm. and directing everything that's happening. Um, much like I could not do sure. anything in my kitchen um, without my dad's help, but I get to work alongside my dad. And it's been a really beautiful thing because I felt bad for a really long time. I was mm. like, oh, dad, you're using all your free time to do this. Like, I'm sure you don't want to do this. And he's been like, I do. I do, because I love getting to spend time with you. Mm. And like, yeah. this is a beautiful, like for him, it's been like such a joy and a blessing. Mm-hmm. And he's been like so generous in his time. Um, but to him, he's like, I get to spend time with you and Elijah. And like, of course, how else would I want to spend my Saturday sure. other than spending time with you? Um, sure. So that's just been like a really um, emotional like mm-hmm. picture for me of, oh, that's like what, our Heavenly Father invites us into too, um, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. we can't do it without Him. Mm-hmm. Um, but but He invites us into that because He wants relationship with us and just mm-hmm. to be with us. So mm-hmm. it's been really beautiful mm-hmm. for me. That's so cool. And part of it for me is a picture too that anything that we're doing can be a spiritual experience. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to use that term like wishy washy or anything yeah. like that, but it can help us reflect on who our Heavenly Father is revealed in Scripture is if our eyes are open to it. And so how many experiences mm-hmm. do we have or moments do we have that we miss out on these opportunities to worship or to have our appreciation of God deepened uh, because maybe we're not looking for them. And mm-hmm. so it's sweet that you've seen that and that you're able to to 
experience that and Mm -hmm. your dad and working alongside you is discipling, um, which is just so cool. There's so Mm -hmm. many different opportunities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I can say as a a floundering handyman too, I love working (laughs) on projects that other people pay for. So, (laughs) um, (laughs) Like breaks and whatnot. Yeah. When my kids, well, when my kids uh, get to an age where they Mm -hmm. have home repair stuff, if they're if they haven't been paying close attention to the quality of the work that I do, <laughs> and as adults they call me over to help, um, it will be wonderful to go and uh, be part of that if, yeah. as, if they pay for it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so no, I'm sure I'll help. They so, pay for so. it by feeding so. you when you come over on a Saturday. Yes, and letting me play with the grandkids yeah. and that sort of stuff. Yeah. So yeah. there's just a sweetness to that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's wonderful. Nice. Yeah. Uh, one of the questions we've been asking our guests is uh, what's been forming you? And in particular, what media recently? So it could be TV shows, it could be music, podcasts, books, Mm -hmm. you know, different things like that. But what have you been sitting in recently that you've been like, oh, I'm I'm taking things away from that? Yeah. um, Bible Project is always um, super formative for me. Um, their podcast and recently their like classroom videos Mm -hmm. have been super helpful for me too. Um, That's in part as in in youth ministry right now where we're like walking through the story of scripture so in part that's been like teaching prep but um it also is very eye-opening and formative for me too in just um how i see the bible and i feel like i feel like there's always just nuggets in there that like when when tim um says something i'm like oh my gosh, that's so, like the way he says it, I'm like, that's mm-hmm. so obvious. But I like would have never mm-hmm. thought to have noticed that or noticed mm-hmm. that pattern. Um, so that's that's been like really, really eye-opening for me and also has then like formed and helped me make those observations like on my own when I read scripture um, in my own time too. So. so we're about to jump on a little excursus into Bible Project. Okay. So background <laughs> for all listeners and viewers, uh, the Bible Project is a phenomenal nonprofit organization out of Portland who put out explainer videos and some really great podcasts and and content. The two main people, Tim Mackey, Mm -hmm. um, who has a PhD from University of Madison, actually Mm -hmm. was on staff down at Black Hawk for a while Mm -hmm. before he went out, taught at Western Seminary, where Mm -hmm. Whitney and I have both taken classes. Mm -hmm. Um, I had my master's uh, through them and had Tim as a a professor. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the other guy is not Adam Driver, but I think he looks like Adam Driver every time (laughs) I see him. So I don't know what the guy's name is. It might be Adam. What's his name? John. 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 Okay. Yep. And it's beautiful because John is an artistic guy has the eye for that but not a bible guy he is a bible guy because he sat with tim for a ton john is yeah john and then tim is just this deep bible nerd Mm -hmm. and so john asks tim good questions and tim talks about it and Mm -hmm. on the podcast and all those things so that's some context so you're a big bible project person too i haven't i haven't watched it for a long time or like listened to it i remember at one point there was for one eight minute explainer video their their videos are what five to eight minutes long typically and they so they've got read scripture ones that walk through each book of the bible where where tim's like he's excellent at finding patterns and yeah. things like that was too good the old, uh, too good it's a it's amazing um as in he makes things up okay well that's that's a different <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry I'm that's just, a I, different conversation yeah, no I don't, um, I don't have anything necessarily to say about that <laughs> I forget where I was Tim's going. amazing. You, you, Explainer you, videos. Cool. Haven't watched a lot. Oh, yeah. So the, like the eight minute video that you watch, the podcast that I was listening to at one point was like, there's 21 hour podcast. There's 20 hours of content to mm-hmm. explain how they got to that eight minute video. Yes. So yeah. if you want to like have really pr- like a, a deep and profound eight minute experience, they're great videos that will educate you and help you think but then if you want to go even deeper than that, listen, there's like 20 hours of content that you can also <laughs> yes, <laughs> wade through if you want to. And one of the things that was really where I like first got connected with Bible Project was during my college years, which I didn't I didn't go to college for like um, Bible reading. Like sure. I, I just went to a secular mm-hmm. um, regular college, I guess. Um, but I was like super – passionate and like excited about my faith during those years Mm -hmm. and i remember finding the bible project podcast and just like devouring it because in my opinion it's one of the best resources as far as connecting like a lay person Mm -hmm. with more like scholarly um seminary level kind of like bible Mm -hmm. conversations Mm -hmm. but making it like really accessible Mm -hmm. for the average joe like me right um but yeah so that's like a that's a accessible piece, but also their new classroom is a is a space that makes seminary level information class 
even structure available to a lay person mm-hmm. that you can engage with. It's yeah, really so Bible fun. Project Classroom is a free resource yes. mm-hmm. um, where they have extended classes yeah. on their inductive, not inductive, but their book book studies mm-hmm. primarily. Are there any non-book studies? Yeah, there's like a study of Joseph. There's how to read a Hebrew Bible. Okay. Mm-hmm. What else is there early on? Um They've been adding a ton of content recently, yes, so I haven't yeah, kept up yeah. as much. Yeah, and I, I haven't watched all of their content, like not even close. No. But um, yeah, I've been we're, we're um, I've been doing the Adam to Noah line, which sure. so it's not like a book study instead, but it's like it follows really closely in Genesis and what's mm-hmm. happening. But mm-hmm. yeah, Tim uh, and the whole Bible project brings a preconception to Scripture that it is highly organized, highly cross referenced. Tim mm-hmm. uses the phrase hyperlinks all over the place, yeah. like that it's highly integrated and. Um, immaculately stylistically laid out, um, and it, I think sometimes it's a little overstated. Hmm. That's that's my take. And Gabby, when, when you said uh, that he says things, and you're like, I never saw that before. There's just been too many experiences where I've sat in a classroom with him or something like that. Hmm. And I've listened to him lecture on something and I've been like, that's incredible. And then I go back and I read it again and I'm like, wait, where was that? Hmm. Like, I don't see that at all Hmm. anymore. Um, And I grant readily that Tim is far smarter than me and has studied (laughs) this far more than me Mm -hmm. and has a far deeper understanding, especially of the Hebrew language and all of those things. And so um, I don't mean to be disparaging at all. No, no. And I, like Justin and I have had conversations like echoing that same kind of sentiment too, where we like... Yeah, yeah. Like there are sometimes things he'll say that I'm like, oh yeah, I totally see that. That's super yes. clear. But then there are like moments where like, uh, I don't know, is that kind what of a reach? I don't know. Like sure. maybe and um There's a preconception he brings. Yes, so, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and like uh I don't know. I don't know if anyone's like nervous hearing that, but like we wouldn't <laughs> we wouldn't present anything to students unless like we heard something and then also like felt very confident that it's like, mm-hmm. yep, when we look in our Bibles, like we really clearly see that too. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and it's a reminder that there are incredible resources and free resources out mm-hmm. there. Um, and not everything's always like you, you can listen to them critically. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. And you should seek to learn, seek to grow, um, but also a, a critical thought process, not saying like nitpicking, but saying, eh, do I agree with that? That's fine. Um, so... In fact, every resource you should be thinking critically about, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Like every media yeah. you put in front of you. And I think scripture is one that stands up, <laughs> you know, like yeah. it, it can take a, the critical eye even. So even if you have questions there, like by all means, mm-hmm. think critically about what you're reading and what you're seeing and what you're hearing. And yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, it's time for Dave's tidbit. Oh, it is. So Dave's little factoid. So what, what we got today, how much does a cloud weigh? Does it depend on what kind of yeah. cloud? Yeah. So how much does a typical Nimbus cloud weigh? Well, now what kind of, is Nimbus like the fluffy one? Cumulus Nimbus are the storm clouds. So Nimbus is going to be the kind of the traditional bigger. The one that looks like a mountain cloud. in the air? No, that's a cumulonimbus. Nimbus. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any <laughs> cloud experts out there, you can, you know, I'm trying to come back to like my seventh grade. Not the, not the serious cloud, sure. serious clouds. Those are the wispy ones? Yeah. Those are the wispy ones high up in the atmosphere. But the, the normal Nimbus clouds that are just the, the chunky clouds that are in the sky. How much do you think that's not going to, dr- it's not a big thunderhead. It's, it's not just a big, like a f- yeah, it's not a big a, dark thunderhead. It's just the, the big old. I mean, there's, cloud. it's the holds a bunch of water. It's huh? like a water vapor up there. So it's think it weighs? real heavy. Real, real heavy. We like, got one vote for, <laughs> for lots. How about how much does Lake Superior weigh? Does it, is it? How much does Lake Superior weigh? I mean, it's like the deepest. Lake Superior is floating around in the clouds, like that much water. Do you that's, think there's that much water? That's a big, I'm going to ask I just, this. I just need a, um, I need a reference here, <laughs> Dave. <laughs> I have no idea. So a five gallon bucket. A gallon of water is what? Just like superior Eight weight. pounds? Weird so five gallon bucket's like 40? I am reaching here big time. Take a guess. <laughs> if, if you have the part of the, po- if you have your podcast player, it cuts out blank space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just cut that yeah, out. Yeah, we just cut out some blank space. So. Um, I think a cumulus cloud. So how, like how big Lake is it? Lake Superior, it, according to AI generating some, doing some, some math, Lake Superior weighs about 986 quadrillion pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. not quadrillion, but I, 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 the scale is so like mind blowing. When I think about a thunderhead and you look at the size of it, like we had this experience in, when we were in Dillon in hiking where we hiked up, um, to a lake that Brian wanted to fish at. And then 
I promptly dropped, like, shoved my phone into the lake and had to, like, get in the lake and get it. And so I'm soaking wet, and a storm cloud comes. And we're on top of a mountain, and you're looking at the storm cloud, and you're like, that thing is bigger than this mountain is. And so I think when you talk about a fluffy little cloud, it's not little. It's the size of maybe a lake that's around here. So that's where I'm going with a lake. But you went with one of the Great Lakes. I know. <laughs> you went with the big <laughs> Great Lake. <laughs> I went with the biggest one because I was still thinking Thunderheads, but that's not what we're talking about. Um, and it's not that dense. Gabby, do you have a guess? Because <laughs> Whitney's um, really nine, up in her head. 90,000 pounds. 90,000 pounds. Oh, I was going to go a lot less than that. Okay. But now I'll say 10,000 I mean, pounds. Right. 10, if, this, if we're playing prices yeah. right, you can yeah. guess anything. <laughs> yeah. The, a typical cloud weighs about a million pounds. <gasps> so oh, my gosh. 500 See, tons. I was not that crazy to go to Lake Superior. That weighs Dave. 986 <laughs> quadrillion pounds. <laughs> so a million times a million is Didn't a trillion. Didn't we already have this conversation about how we can't really grasp big numbers? A and trillion so times a million is a quadrillion. So 986,000 trillion off. pounds. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, uh, a million pounds. So about uh, a million pounds in terms of elephants, it's about 100 elephants. Worth a cloud. And I still want to like oh. know size, like how it compares to like a lake. Like a, what is a, a normal cumulus I, cloud? How your, does it... your standard is the largest freshwater <laughs> lake in the world. Like I don't get this. It's my favorite like, it's one. It's not a lake, you know, like go to Plover and look at Lake Pacoa or something like that. That is like not that. a lake. That's a so, little puddle. Uh, sure. But it's not Lake <laughs> Superior either. Right. Um, so, all I just, right. There you go. my favorite. Sorry. No. That's that's fine. <laughs> that's wonderful. Um, all right. Well, that's been Dave's, Dave's tidbit for the day. Let's talk about the sermon. Let's so talk about the sermon. Sunday, Sunday in Acts thirteen, a mm-hmm. uh, sermon about a sermon. A heck of a um, chunk of scripture. So, yeah, John Mouser. cruised. Um, yeah. So, and there's a lot of content, and, and I really like how John. I, I agree with him that this was probably the pretty typical message that that Paul, uh, gave. Paul gave mm-hmm. when he went mm-hmm. into synagogues. And so, mm-hmm. you know, the next couple of places he's going to go to Derby and Lystra and Iconium and uh, you know mm-hmm. these places and preach probably the same message. Mm-hmm. Essentially, it's like, hey, look at this this Old Testament history. Mm-hmm. Um, look, look where we came from, and now Jesus is here. Mm-hmm. Um, boldly proclaims the gospel. There was a sense, there was a question that was submitted by the curriculum team talking about um, how Paul seemed to tailor how he expressed the gospel to, to in, in the context that he was in. So like he goes to the synagogue and he connects it to Old Testament history that the synagogue, pe- folks in the synagogue would have heard over and over and over again. You've heard this, you've heard this, you've heard this, you've heard this. Um, and, I, and I feel like that's a uncomfortable thing of like, how do you... The gospel is the gospel, right? Um, but to connect it to your audience in a con- in te- contextual way, I think, makes good sense. And I think we see it in scripture. So that I don't know. That's a it, that's that's an interesting point because, um, gosh, this I picked you got a this big old Bible, Bible this there, is friend. A chunk yeah. of the Bible <laughs> here. So I'm trying to flip through this. This is a study Bible. It's the Reformation Study Bible, ESV. If you hit someone with it, it will hurt. Um, I'm prepping for uh, this coming Sunday uh, when Paul and Barnabas go to Iconium and then Lystra. Mm -hmm. um, And it says in verse 7, they continued to preach the gospel. Um, They're going to these different cities. And these are cities that are so different uh, than uh, Antioch and Mm -hmm. Pisidia and Mm -hmm. different things like that. Culturally, they're different. Um, Like these are country kind of podunk towns. Um, And so you have Athens, which is this great Greek philosophical community. And Mm -hmm. earlier on Cyprus, he had gone before the Roman proconsul and Sergius Paulus and had preached the gospel there. And you see all of these different contexts, Corinth, which is this bustling metropolis. And um, and yet he's... He might be contextualizing a little bit, but he's still preaching the gospel. Right. The gospel in doesn't every, change. Yeah. But there's, a, there's like a... And it's probably a very similar gospel, really. Right. And the reason I'm saying that is I was just reading a Charles Spurgeon sermon on uh, Acts 14, which sounds really fancy. Uh, it's not a typical prep process, <laughs> reading, reading Spurgeon as I'm prepping. But he was making that exact same point, is that Paul's going to all these different contexts and he's just preaching the gospel. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're obviously not dumbing it down. You're not. You're not... You're not starting with like, uh, like, this is your problem. And so that, that's how I'm going to get to the gospel. He's just saying, this is the gospel. Mm-hmm. It's the gospel. Mm-hmm. And it's what you need. Mm-hmm. It's what everyone needs. It's what I need. It's what you need. So, um, 
but he is intentional. And, you know, I think about mm -hmm. certainly in Athens later. Mm -hmm. uh, right. When he's like, at the Iriagapagus. Right. right. Here's what I, here's what I observe in your, in your context is yeah. you've got statues to the God we don't know. Well, let me tell you, mm -hmm. it's the same problem. He just, he, he's looking contextually around what's happening and applying the gospel doesn't change that thing, but says it, it applies actually to all of life. Yeah. <laughs> here's mm -hmm. the, here's how we can do that, which I think is just an interesting thing to think about. Yeah. And I, I think it flows out of his, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Right. Like, um, he, he was not ashamed in any context to say, this is, this is what we're going to be talking about right now. This is what's important to me. Mm -hmm. Um, that's such a good challenge. I think for, for us, um, to consider where in our life we can lean in or press in or, mm -hmm be challenged in that so mm -hmm. hmm. Gabby what thoughts did you have from Sunday morning um, yeah yeah well now I'm thinking I'm even thinking about um, contextualizing the gospel even for like different generations hmm. um, and I mean I'm thinking about that because that's largely what we try and do like in youth ministry mm -hmm. um, specifically like because every generation kind of has their own um, cultural moment that they're swimming in, um, issues, struggles, um, and, and the gospel speaks to, um, yeah, to all people through all generations. Um, but there's sometimes there's like something, um, specific, um, that the gospel kind of puts a finger on in a unique way, um, mm -hmm. for a different generation. Um, yeah. like I've been thinking a lot about, um, for like Gen Z and Gen Alpha anxiety and like being anxious. And um, so the imagery of like um, being a slave to like sin or like a mm. slave to something that's, because mm. um, a lot of these kids feel like, it feels like their anxiety like dictates their entire life, like what they can mm. and can't do and how they show up in the world. Um, so even like speaking about like, yeah, the gospel says that Jesus has power over that and like has power to offer you freedom from, from mm. these kinds of things. Um, yeah, yeah, so. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking about right now. But have you seen in those conversations? Have you seen freedom for students? Yeah, yeah. I think it's. I think it's always like um, balancing our expectations of like um, there. There is there is freedom in the gospel. Um, but I also never want to like unhelpfully um, say to students. So you're never like you're never going to feel anxious again. Yeah. Like, and you should mm -hmm. expect that if you put enough faith in Jesus, you're yes, not going to feel yes. anxious. Uh, yeah. And, and I never want to set up um, something that makes, that would make a student feel like, oh, well, do I not have enough faith or do I not, right. like, mm -hmm. did I do something mm -hmm. wrong? Did I not mm -hmm. truly accept Jesus in my heart if I sure. still feel nervous about going to school tomorrow? Um, um, yeah. So, so I never, I never want to set up that expectation. But what I, what I have seen come from those conversations is students saying, okay, yes, I recognize that I still feel this sometimes, but what I can do now is I can like look to Jesus and experience mm -hmm. peace or experience mm -hmm. like a knowledge that, okay, even if this feeling doesn't go away, I know this feeling isn't what's in control of me. Like this mm -hmm. feeling doesn't mm -hmm. define who I am. Like it's mm -hmm. Jesus that defines who I am. Mm -hmm. um, and and of course, I'm, I mean, even I think about that in my life, like I can know that and like live into that with varying degrees of success. But yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's where I've seen that bring hope to students. Though, There's I almost think. a sense too that like sometimes anxiety is just a hamster wheel of the same thoughts over and over and over again. Of like the the anxiousness that I feel is because I'm there's a there's a story I'm living in my head. We live a lot more in our head than we do even outwardly through words with people. And when you can when the gospel shows you something that's different and true, you still have this pattern that you're trying to in inject, interject. Mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. going to Bolivia and um, there's the, the cycle of poverty. And it's not just poverty of like not having enough things, physical things to shelter or food to survive, but there's a spiritual poverty or there's like an mm -hmm. identity poverty of like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm, I am poor and so I'm something, I'm this thing. And it was this, they were, they were trying to like quit the lies and so truth was kind of the mm -hmm. the dichotomy that they gave of like this these these are the lies that you're told over and over again this is the identity that your circumstance is giving you you need to sow truth and let those seeds come to fruition but it's kind of also what you tend to then as well right like yeah. if if yeah so just an interesting space that we live in in our heads a lot and and freedom comes but it's not always like overnight right right well, and it's, 
fits and starts sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not overnight at all. Mm-hmm. I always think of, I'm hearing Justin in my head and the little illustration he gives about spiritual formation and spiritual mm-hmm. growth. Mm-hmm. Um, it's plants and not Legos? Yes. So, and I'm going to use that on Sunday. <gasps> plants and not Legos. Spoilers. Yeah, you oh want to spoil gosh. it? Spoil it because it's so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he talks about, he brings up, we have like these big Lego bricks that we mm-hmm. use in youth ministry sometimes. Um, and he brings them out and he says, we, we think that we're like a Lego tower or like a Lego... Sure. Building, and we can just change it in an instant. We can say, "Oh, I don't like this piece here. I'm going to move it over here, or yeah. I'm going to take it down and build something new." Mm-hmm. Um, and you can do that pretty instantaneously. Um, and and we we want to be like that. We mm-hmm. think sometimes that we are like that, um, but what's actually true is we're more like a plant um, <laughs> that you have to water and yeah. tend. Yeah. Um, and it's Prune. yep, and it's little decisions every day. Like it's it's remembering to water your plant. Every day, or remembering to, or to weed your garden yeah. every like regularly, yeah. um, that leads over a long period of time um, to to growth and flourishing. Mm-hmm. Um, but but and, if you if and you do weeds one, are also relentless, like yes. like you can weed them, but they like and you're not just done. Yes, you have yeah. to come back and continue to get them out. So yes, yeah. yeah. But what we expect to happen is, and and I'm, the point of the illustration is, it would be silly to plant a seed today and then. Come and check on it tomorrow and say, where's my beautiful, gorgeous flower? Like, why didn't it, why didn't it spring work. up overnight? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but that's that's often how we treat mm-hmm. um, following Jesus and mm-hmm. sanctification and, and mm-hmm. what we expect that to look like in our own mm-hmm. lives. Mm-hmm. Sorry. It's such a long, patient, careful process. Um, yeah. That's good. both for ourselves and for people around us. Mm-hmm. You know, it's mm-hmm. like it, the patience that it requires for yourself to grow should engender patience with others as they're growing as well and realize, like, I, I'm picturing, I've got, it's called a snake plant or mother-in-law's tongue in the corner of my house. Mother-in-law's tongue? I know. It's like, that's why <laughs> I don't use that very often. It's a name. snake plant. <laughs> um, but my mother-in-law came and called it that, and I was like, oh. <laughs> Kid. That's another name for it. Um but like it was looking unhealthy, so I clipped off some tops of it, and there's like three shoots that are like up and looking wonderful, and like a couple <laughs> that are awful and have been cut off. And I'm not sure those suckers are coming back. But it's been months, and the, and the thing is alive still. And so it's just this like the patience to see what's going to come, what's going on, what am I even tending? Sometimes I don't even know what I need to tend mm-hmm. to for those things, and you need help, which brings the community piece into it as well. Always Look at, back we're to there. community. Yeah. Yep. So. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, gardening is such a such an apropos analogy for mm-hmm. spiritual growth and mm-hmm. formation, which is why it works well in this series, which is why it's used throughout scripture. Mm-hmm. It's not just because it was an agrarian culture. It's because it's the way to think about it. Mm-hmm. It's God causes the growth, mm-hmm. um, but it takes time and it takes effort and tending and caring. Mm-hmm. So in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Hey, here's a, here's a thing, just even as I'm processing this passage, um, you know, verse 48 and verse 52, the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of the Lord. Um, in verse 52, and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. I mean, it's just such a marker. These passages, go; they swing so hard from like fierce persecution to joy, to persecution to joy. Um, and it's these extremes that I, I think sometimes don't mark I don't know. It doesn't feel like it marks my life as much. Like, mm. I don't know that I feel like overwhelming joy over the gospel in some of the ways that it talks about here. Mm. Um, and I, I want to, I want to have that, mm-hmm. you know, I want to be able to be like, wow, I was rejoicing and glorifying the word of the Lord rejoicing in. Mm. Um, and so that's a, that's a, just a, a word I think for myself as I'm processing what is, what does it look like to consider the word of the Lord? sit in it, to see it, and then what should it produce in me? It should mm-hmm. produce joy and exuberant worship. So hmm. that's a sweet picture. In the midst, it, those two verses frame yeah. like- <laughs> The persecution oh, that's happening. Yeah, all these people yeah. getting ex- incited and mm-hmm. kicking out the disciples mm-hmm. and Paul and Barnabas shaking off their feet, the dust in their feet. So and I don't think John quite got to those verses, um, but yeah. <laughs> the, so. Yeah. Yeah, I think that almost speaks kind of to something that other places in Scripture attest to, though, too, of like this really profound joy often 
confusingly does kind of come hand in hand with like Mm -hmm. really hard and difficult moments too. Like I'm thinking of the Beatitudes right now too, where um, Jesus says like, blessed are her are those who mourn are like all of these things that like you wouldn't intuitively think yeah that person is like really blessed um but yeah i don't know scripture i think over and over like speaks to this kind of confusing like these confusing things Mm -hmm. that don't seem like they should go together um but but that is what the gospel produces is is this like really powerful potent joy um even and i think especially amongst um hard hardship that's a good word that is especially um and it, it might be because just a, such a key part of the gospel is it ties our hope into what's not yet mm-hmm. um and it allows our already to be shaped by what's the not yet and so when we face when our lives are defined by the hope of the gospel when we face particularly trying circumstances um we're able to see what we don't have all the more clearly mm-hmm. and I think that that can allow us to rejoice all the more fully in that which we know will come true. Yeah. And so when I'm when my life is going great here, I'm kind of like, hey, this is okay. Hmm. And there's less longing for and desire maybe for the life to come. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But when I face a circumstance that I'm just like, this is how c- this is, should not be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, then I'm able to say, but God, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that it won't be forever. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, so there's a profoundness to that. That's a man. That that's a reframing thought there. Mm-hmm. So I don't know that I've thought about that before. I'm mm-hmm. speaking off the cuff here. So yeah, that's a yeah. <laughs> good, good word, Gabby. <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a part and there's an understanding and partnering with Jesus in his suffering that doesn't Paul talk about? He's filling up mm-hmm. the sufferings mm-hmm. of Christ in the yeah. body. Um, that maybe we're maybe maybe that for the joy set before him is we understand that a little bit more mm. when you're in the suffering that Jesus also I mean experienced to a different level than we ever will here but yeah, yeah. Um, you're experiencing that which Christ came to redeem us from yeah well it's sin as well like that yeah. that's sin and, and sin doesn't work like that like when we're sinning we're not like thank God like I filled with Grace the joy abounds, of the spirit right? because yeah. um, no, no because it is it's a heartbreak there yeah. um, sin in relation to our relationship with God, but um, hmm. yeah, and that's that's a word. So, so here's the thing, and and I don't want to wade into this um, uh, ungraciously, but I think today, and very much so in our generations and all of that stuff, um, we so want to be empathetic in in mourning alongside people and caring. And sometimes there's this notion that like, oh, we don't want to Jesus juke, you know, or do, mm. we don't want to, um, we, we want to walk <laughs> alongside who, people who are going through a hard time. We don't want to tritely point them to the gospel and stuff yeah. like that. But I think sometimes it makes it so that we're a little afraid to like point to the hope of the gospel mm-hmm. yeah. um, and point to the reality that we can rejoice in sorrow and suffering. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. when we have people that we love who are walking through really, really difficult times, there is joy to be found yeah. in the gospel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't ever want to shy away from that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, but I think it, I think in those moments, it doesn't, the joy doesn't look like what you would expect it to look like. Mm-hmm. And I think that's maybe when sometimes yeah. people get hurt is when um, maybe someone like places an expectation of like, and this is what your joy should look like. Like yeah. you, mm-hmm. you can find joy in this moment and it should mm-hmm. look like this. Um, mm-hmm. But it, I think at least in my experience, um, it has been like joy has come in these like really unexpected ways that um, you wouldn't normally look at and say that's that's joy. Um, but but in the moment, like Jesus does meet you in like these really sweet mm-hmm. and unexpected ways, and and it does bring a really profound sense of joy. Um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know where I'm going with that thoughtfully, but yeah. No, that's 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 yeah, absolutely. So. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a chunk of Old Testament yeah. scripture and in, in context in here. Um, anything in that that anyone wants to to chat about? <laughs> Otherwise, we can look at verse 48, which is one of my favorite verses too. I think I know where that so, one is. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> just a that's just a verse that you know if you're a if you're an Armenian friend or a mm-hmm. dispensational friend, this uh, this verse will throw you for some loops. I think. So, um, 
When the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of the Lord. And as many as were appointed to eternal life believed. The ones who believed were those who had been appointed to eternal life Mm -hmm. ahead of time by our Lord. Mm -hmm. They believed. So I think it's a pretty, uh, pretty fun verse. (laughs) What makes it fun for you? Huh? I, I think it just speaks to the providence of God. Yeah. It speaks to the directed, directional. This is this is a, a verse that, that gives freedom in our missional efforts. Yeah. I think it I think throughout all of Acts there's this beautiful picture of God working with human yeah. to rescue people. And it's you can work in it with a, this incredible freedom of I don't necessarily have to say the right, right words, like Paul. <laughs> yep. You know, I'd like i this, this verse would not have happened if Paul wasn't doing what he was doing. Right. This verse is not a get out of evangelism no. verse. No. So it's not get out of faithfulness. It's nope. But it's, it's get out of worrying about your effectiveness. It's trusting the acting agent is this Holy Spirit. Yeah. And that you get to work alongside them and learn from them. Like you're working alongside your dad, but the kitchen renovation wouldn't be happening without him mm-hmm. directing it. And mm-hmm. yeah. Those whom God will draw to himself are those who will come. Yeah. So, but we don't know who that is. And so we act in faith and mm-hmm. follow faithfully. So, And you don't, they also don't like necessarily give up on somebody that you've thrown a seed to. Or like, I, you know, when I think of family members that I've been praying for, for salvation for a long time, mm-hmm. and it doesn't seem like it's fertile ground for the gospel to take root and grow. It doesn't mean that the ground can't be worked up eventually or at some point in their life. We don't know mm-hmm. the end game, but we can be faithful in how we sow seeds and yeah. Partner with God. I think my main just evangelism wrestling these days is just be faithful in the season and place that God is calling you to mm-hmm. and make sure you're doing the work to ask God what he would have you be doing. Mm. Um, don't do evangelistic work because you felt guilted into it because of something someone has said. Mm. Um, do evangelistic work because you've sat at the feet of Jesus. You're listening to the Holy Spirit and he's calling you to to be engaged in somewhere and then do it faithfully mm-hmm. um, wherever you're called. And that might be in your home, that might be in your work, that might be, you know, uh, it, it, to strangers, whatever your gifting mm-hmm. and place in life and calling is, um, be faithful there, mm-hmm. um, but be about it. So one of the reasons I love this verse is because uh, I heard it preached, and I've said this before, but I heard it preached by a very dispensational pastor friend of mine hmm. who just skipped it. <laughs> That's right. And he said afterwards, he's like, I didn't know, I don't know what to do with it. And so I skipped yeah. it. And I'm like, you don't, you don't <laughs> you get to do, do that. that. <laughs> That's not allowed. So oh you have to preach the verses. Hmm. <laughs> so. Oh, funny. Anyway. Hmm. Um, yeah. Can I, sh- can I share like a sweet evangelism moment that I Please. had? Please. Recently? I mean, it, I guess it maybe wasn't evangelism in like the four point gospel way that you'd maybe think about it. But, um, my, my sister is someone who is still just kind of trying to figure out what she thinks about, about Jesus. And, um, I've, she's someone that I've had many conversations with, um, and very much knows what, um, I believe. Um, but, and, and she was kind of trapped. So maybe this is like not a totally fair example but <laughs> elijah and i were driving her somewhere um so she didn't have a choice what to listen to what we were saying but um and elijah and i were like having a conversation about um a book that he had been reading um and we were talking about actually joy um and actually kind of something similar to what we were just talking about and like how do you how do you think about joy if like joy is a fruit of the spirit but like what what happens if you're moving through your life day to day and don't really have joy and like so we were just kind of like going back and forth on this and then I'm saying I'm like, I should ask Katie what she mm-hmm. thinks. Um, she's like sitting in the back seat. Um, so it turned into this really sweet moment of I was like, you know, Katie, like, where do you think joy comes from? Like, mm-hmm. like, what do you think that looks like? Um, and and it opened up this really, um, hmm. prof- like, one of the most kind of profound conversations I've I've had with her. And I mean, it didn't end with her, right, being like, I'm gonna accept Jesus now or mm-hmm. or anything like that. Um, but it was just this, I don't know, it was a really sweet moment for Elijah and I because it was like we were already having that conversation mm-hmm. and we could have just kept having that conversation and never, and it just would have ended with us. But that simple thing to be like, hey, Katie, what do you what do you think about this? Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it just opened up something really sweet. Do you think that, that was a prompting of the spirit? 
that um, made you say, hey, wait, I could ask. Katie. Yeah, probably. That's kind of what it sounded like when you were talking. Yeah. 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 Then led by the spirit, Gabby yeah. turned to the back seat. <laughs> so, or filled with the spirit, Gabby turned to the back seat. Yeah. Um, yeah. But filled, I think that filled that's, with the spirit and talking about joy. <laughs> yeah. But I think that that's, that's part of what it, it does look like too. Yeah. It's faithfully going through life, pursuing and listening to the spirit and then moving and responding. Mm-hmm. And it puts us in situations where evangelism is not hard. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't mean that it isn't always uncomfortable. It doesn't mean that it isn't always out of our comfort zones or things like that. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, it's faithful. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I think it was like such a win for me in that moment because then I was like reflecting, I'm like, oh my gosh, I could do that with like so many different people that I have relationships with. And it's not this like, like to ask someone, where do you think joy comes from is not like this really like, I, I don't know. It's not something that people would like really put their guard up to right away. Right. I don't think. Whereas right. maybe um, asking them what they think about God might, yeah. might yeah. kind of. What's your thoughts on hell? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but it really, do, it so clearly connects to the gospel and who mm-hmm. Jesus mm-hmm. is that it, it, yeah, it just opened up this really, um, yeah, profound spiritual conversation that I don't, that, yeah, Katie doesn't normally open up to. So mm-hmm. that's super sweet. Cool. Sweet, so. sweet. It's going to be good. We only have a few more weeks in Acts, actually. Yeah, I mean, it's through November, which is a whole month, but we're almost in November here. Mm-hmm, yeah. uh, maybe you're listening to this and it is November. Mm-hmm. Uh, what in the world? It's almost 2025. <laughs> um, we still have two months left. <laughs> yeah, but those are going to go so quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So we only have uh, five more weeks in Acts, um, and then we get to Christmas time and all of that wonderfulness. Uh, which will be good, but uh, I think all five of these, all five of the remaining weeks are going to feel. There's just this consistent theme mm-hmm. of uh, faithfulness, of mm-hmm. uh, planting, obviously, of, of just growth and trust. Trust the work that God is doing, um, mm-hmm. and I think that's mm-hmm. a good word for each of us in our spiritual lives too. Whatever stage you're you're at, wherever journey you're in, trust the work that God is doing. Seek faithfulness, mm-hmm. pursue His Spirit, listen, respond, um, and trust Him. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Hey, yeah. well, this has been Cabin Conversations. Been. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we will see you back next week. Okay. Toodles. Bye. Bye.